All right, Eric Darling here with Darling Data. It's the sign, sign indicates. Uh, and today uh, we are going to talk about how uh, I think, my, it's my personal belief, that uh, writing cursor loops is uh, much easier than writing while loops. So we're going to talk about cursor loops in today's video. Uh, this is, of course, uh, part of my uh, little itty bitty teaser bits of my Learn T SQL course. Uh, if you would like to buy that course, hire me for training, uh, become a supporting channel member, or even ask me office hours questions, all of those helpful links are down in the video description right below this. So I, I would encourage you to click on those. Uh, should you be interested in pursuing our relationship further. Uh, and of course, if uh, you, you, you feel so kind, if you're feeling so kind, uh, you could always like, like, subscribe, and tell a friend about this channel. Uh, of course, I need to leave the house a few times this year uh, for the Pass on Tour event, and of course, for Pass Data Community Summit. Uh, I will be in Dallas, September 15th and 16th, Utrecht. October 1st and 2nd and Past Data Community Summit in Seattle, November 17th to 21st, where I have not one but two, two magnificent days of pre-cons with Kendra Little, all about T-SQL. We'll be covering uh, some of the material that I'm, I'm going over here. So with that out of the way, let our, let our database party begin. We will uh, get right into our cursor loops. Now, there, like I said in the intro, in the in intro to this video, uh, I really do believe that writing, like once you learn how to write a cursor, uh, it takes, it simplifies a lot of things uh, that you might have to consider and try to be smart about when using a while loop. So uh, when I, like, I think probably the best way to write a cursor in order to simplify even that part is to use what's called the cursor variable. And the nice part about cursor variables is that you don't need to uh, close or deallocate them. They automatically are self-cleaning, which I think is nice. So what I'm going to do is just run through a basic cursor loop to uh, just populate some data and just kind of show you, like, you know, it's like the, the basic fundamentals of it. And then I'm going to compare, uh, or rather, I'm going to do a, a demo like in yesterday's video with while loops, uh, where things are sort of uh, greatly simplified for us over needing to think about how to increment and how to find what to work on next. So uh, I've got my cursor stuff declared up here. Zoom it would be so kind as to actually zoom. Uh, we've got this stuff up here. Uh, and then I'm going to be using a table variable to hold some of our data because I'm just putting a single row at a time in there. I don't really care so much about uh, the performance of this. So the table variable is just fine for us here. Uh, and then I'm going to uh, set the cursor variable with the options that I want and also tell the cursor variable uh, what the query that uh, populates the cursor looks like. That's this portion down here. Um, I, I talk way more about the cursor options in my uh, in the full class. So if you're curious about these, well, please please consider purchasing. Uh, and then uh, we will open the cursor, and while that cursor is open, we will do uh, some fetching uh, into the cursor, and then uh, we will uh, you know populate some stuff. And what we're going to do is uh, what I what I have in here is some additional stuff to kind of show you how the cursor makes progress through. Uh, all of the values and stuff because I, I want you to what I want you to see is how the fetch status changes as the cursor finishes and then we will be looking at the results down here so after I finish highlighting this gigantic loopy piece of code uh, we're gonna run this and we're gonna get a result back very quickly with all of the data that we populated our table variable with right here over in the messages tab though, um, this is where uh, we'll see sort of how the while loop, or rather the cursor loop made progress and how this is a little bit easier than the, the while loop equivalent. See, we didn't have to tell the cursor loop what row it was gonna get next. Uh, like we didn't have to increment some value and then go find that value. Uh, the cursor loop is based on this query. And this query here just goes and finds the next thing for us to do anything with it. Actually, the cursor keeps track of this position for us. So we got all of the stuff that we wanted. And of course, uh, while the fetch status was zero, which is for all of these iterations through, we went and we got uh, a new uh, row to work on, worked on what we needed to do, and then at the very end of the while loop, the fetch status changed to negative one. That, me that means that the, the loop killed itself, and we didn't have to tell it to do anything. So this is how uh, one way how cursor loops can be a little bit simpler to write once you understand the basic syntax than writing while loops. Now, uh, 
to compare the cursor loop to the while loop in yesterday's video, there were lots of things that I had to do in yesterday's video in order to uh, figure out like a starting and ending position for the while loop, how to increment data, how to increment to get the next row in the while loop versus like uh, not like doing a naive incrementing, just like adding one to the next ID to get, uh, having to think about how to increment things so that I was making sure that I got the next value. So I'm going to show you how this is simplified for the cursor loop. Now, um, in yesterday's video, I, I showed you like both a naive and then a smarter way of doing things. Uh, but it, but in the the smarter way of doing things, of course, was more efficient. But of course, in this case, we can get more efficiency without having to worry about thinking about stuff uh, too much, which is nice because we can now think about other things like what's it like where to go for dinner and what sort of wine to drink and uh, I don't know like where we want to go on vacation next. We'll we're to become more efficient people. And so uh, we, we, have, we have better things to do with our minds than figure out what to do in a while loop, right? Which is not fun, which is not, a, not making good use of time, right? It's not a productive use of our brains, whereas thinking about food and wine and vacations, terribly productive use of our brains. So um, what uh, we've got from this table is, of course, the, the same non-contiguous situation uh, in, as we had yesterday where uh, like the IDs that we're working off do not just count up like one through 10 or whatever, the way that the, the row number function does. The row number function rows are over here. So we can see that we have some big gaps in a lot of this between what number is next or not. So what we can do uh, to write a cursor to do this is pretty much what we did before, but I wanna show you uh, just how like, we don't really have to do much as much setup for this, right? We don't have to find a min and a max ID. We don't have to decide how to increment. We don't have to like do a lot of pre-work to uh, figure out our cursor, place, our cursor starting place, uh, current position and ending place. Cursor does that for us. So let's run this. And uh, I am gonna show you some of the um, sort of uh, guts of what happens as we run through this. And just like in the last demo, uh, we'll see that the cursor does a great job of, you know, while the fetch status is zero, uh, just going and finding the exact next row that we needed based on the query we gave it to populate the cursor. So this is all very nice. And we, we go through and we, we don't like double work anything. And we don't have any sort of no ops where we like maybe incremented by one and found a row that didn't exist. And uh, then at the very end, after we hit uh, 100, we have our fetch status of zero. Uh, this does double print, but it does not double work 100 here. Uh, it's just a, a double printing thing that, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'd say I'd fix it in post, but we're, we're already posted. So anyway, uh, running through the cursor loop like that, uh, we end up with no dupes, right? We just, every row has a count of one, whereas when we did the naive looping with the while loop yesterday, we had a lot of dupes where we were just like finding, where we're either working with the same number over and over again, or we would have double worked and sort of no opt things. So cursor loops, usually much more efficient mentally and uh, I guess in the database physically than writing while loops, especially if you do not write while loops in a way that intelligently goes through your data and finds what to work on next. So uh, I do hope that you will uh, perhaps spend some time learning how to write effective cursors in, C in T SQL. It can be done. I know that uh, cursors get a lot of bad press for performance. And that, that is true. Like, curs like cursors can, like, you know, um, Cursors can per perform poorly when compared to uh, sometimes set-based operations, but even sometimes uh, cursor loops versus while loops, uh, cursor loops are generally on the more efficient side, at least for us as the, the, you know, the, the writer and maintainer of the code, and especially on the database side, where if we make a mistake with a while loop, we could pay quite a penalty in the database. Whereas if we make a, if we, you know, uh, we, can't, we don't have the ability to make that mistake with the cursor because the cursor is keeping track of things for us. And, you know, computers, pretty, da pretty darn good at keeping track of things. Anyway, that's it for me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you, uh, well, t this, is, this is going out on Friday. So the next video will be office hours. And uh, I realized in the last video that I, I accidentally only copied four questions. And I've maybe lied about answering five questions. So um, I don't know. Should I do six questions in the next one? Or should I just do the normal five? I haven't decided yet. I don't, want, I don't want to set a bad precedent here. Start miscounting and playing catch up and all that. Anyway, thank you for watching. All right. Goodbye. Happy Friday, too, because uh, you, you should at least get one of those in your life.
All right. Goodbye.